Hey folks, Nick Tockert here. Uh, normally I would be broadcasting a live stream and I will in about half an hour, but we needed to talk about what's going on with the uh, new OGL 1.2 draft for discussion purpose that Wizards of the Coast put out because I've read through it and then I cross-referenced some interesting bits and I'm going to read through it right now. I want to talk about it because this may be if not everything we wanted, very, very close. And I think it bears a discussion about a key element being that certain parts of D&D are going to be considered creative commons. What is and isn't is going to be a point people talk about. So I want to get in and just cover this real quick for you. Before I do, as I said, my name is Nick Tucker. I'm a freelance author, artist, game designer, sword master, and all around uh, YouTube guy. Please like, follow, and subscribe to this for all sorts of things supporting creative efforts. Now let's get into the uh, the meat and potatoes of what we're talking about today. All right, what we have here is the draft for discussion purposes only as put out by Wizards of the Coast. Draft, draft. It's very nice that they're putting draft all over things. And we're going to skim through this real quick uh, because there's the parts that are going to be quibbled about in the parts that I find really interesting. Uh, introduction to uh, SR uh, system reference document 5.1. Ways to create D&D content is available to you in many ways. And that's Dungeons and Dragons. I'll just slip through it. The core mechanics of D&D, which are on uh, pages 56 through 104, 54 through 60, and 358 through 359 of the system reference document 5.1. That's the SRD, folks. But not the examples listed on those pages are licensed to you under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 license, CC by 4.0. This means... Wizards is not putting any limitations on how you use that context, that content. All right, let's talk about that because that's what's interesting, folks. I spent the morning going through what is and isn't there as creative uh, commons. That means their hands are completely off it. Uh, Creative Commons are wonderful. I did not think we'd ever get a, a WOTC to acknowledge a concept of a Creative Commons uh, license. But what is in there is level advancement, proficiencies, alignment mechanics, monster design, and conditions. Uh, I'm sorry, ma magic design, magic mechanics, uh, monster design, and conditions. What does that mean? They don't want you to use Creative Commons to replace their core rule books. What they want is you to be able to use the tools to build your own characters, uh, build your own classes, build your, your own uh, spells, your own magic items, your own monsters, and your own conditions. So basically everything that would be additive to the Dungeons and Dragons system environment. This is a really neat way to do it. Uh, what is not on there are our D and D races as described, classes as described, spells as described, magic items as described, actual monsters as described, and actual conditions as described. They want to keep all their stuff theirs. Now, that is still huge for the people who are uh, creating their own uh, offshoots who want to... With, with this, you could design your own setting very easily and not repeat any of the uh, the things you would find in D&D. &D. This, 
This is a good hope, guys. I, right now, th that's one of the most important things of this whole document. Uh, it, it also means that all their happy little uh, caveats don't apply to these pages. So, so be sure to download the SRD and read through it yourself. I am not a lawyer. I am just, this is just my uh, opinion as a guy who's been doing game design for a long time. Going back, our copyrights, rights, and other content are in the, in the uh, um, let me try that again. Our copyrights, copyright rights, that's what's wrong now, in this, in the other content included in this system system reference document are licensed to you under OGL, Open Game License, sorry, 1.2. The use of D&D content in virtual uh, tabletops is allowed, allowed on the terms of Wizards Virtual Tabletop Policy. That's uh, farther in this content. The use of D&D content in streaming, fan art, and other content is described in Wizards fan art policy, which, which having looked at it, basically is do it, but don't make money off of it. Uh, actually, I have to double check that because they may have changed that. Platforms such as D&D Beyond and DMs Guild provide additional paths to share your D&D content under different license terms. Okay. None of that's shocking. This is neat. I like this. Creator content product badges. For content published under OGL 1.2, you may use one of the following badges in the manner specified, and you can talk to that as long as you comply with the, the guide using this badge. Comply with the guide and using the badges. Wizards licenses you under OGL 1.2 to use such a badge for license work. Okay, so this, they want to bring, again, they want to bring... Uh, more stuff under the fold. So by having a badge like this, it makes it, it more homogenous. It doesn't let you into the walled garden, but it lets you play in their yard, effectively. This is the one everybody's not happy about, but notice of the deauthorization of OGL 1.0A. The game license OGL... One point, the OGL license 1.0 is no longer the, an authorized license. This means you may not use that version of the OGL under or any prior version to pu pu publish SRD under effective date, which means you can't, that any content previously published under that version needs to update to this license. Any previously published content that Remiance licensed under whichever version of the OGL was in effect when you published that content. Okay, they still want to scrap the OGL because the OGL is very, the original OGL is very permanent. Now we're getting into the, the bread and potato, the meat. You know, we're, we're through the potatoes. Let's get to the, the meat. Open game license 1.2. Oh, Watsi, you guys who know, you can use this for content in your own TTRPG by using this content you agree in terms. That we included, and other terms referring to us, I include our fillers, successors, and predecessors. Who predecessors does make me nervous. I don't like reverse anything, but we'll see. License content. Our, our license content includes any content SRD 5.0 and 5.1 and any subsequent version re release that is not licensed to you under Creative Commons. You may use that content in your works under the terms of this license, which means you get all those goodies and whatever they say under the following terms, to the best of my understanding. Unlicensed con content. Any content we release that is not licensed, you can use our content. Just This license uh, permits you to combine your content with our licensed content and distribute resulting works authorized. Works cover. Okay, that mean that's that's the hybrid stuff you want. So if you want to say, take your your basic rogue and give them a time skip ability or something farcical, under this license you can. Your your licensed works will be, pardon the truck, to be licensed work under this license it must be covered by section one B. 
Oh, wait, I'm sorry. We skipped one in this is important section. Works covered only applies to printed media and static electronic files, such as EPUBs. You create this to use to, or you create for use in tabletop RPGs and supplements and virtual tabletops in compliance with our VTT. I think what happened is the looking at the way they're phrasing this, I would pull out my mental crystal ball and say, I think they were doing this in hopes of they were worried that people could use the VTT systems to essentially make D and D video games without having to license it through D and D. That is an interesting thing, and we'll get to the VTTs later. Your license works must be covered in Section One B. That's why I had to be sure contain our licensed content and yours not contained unlicensed content. Okay. That means everything has to be covered somehow. Copyrights. We are granting you our copyrights in our licensed content, except under the Section 15A. We also grant you trademark license to the creator content, creator product badge, as further detailed in creator style badge. You receive no other rights for our time and no other rights for property we own. That means the only image they're letting you play with at all is the uh, creator product badge. It's interesting that they keep going back to that. I think there is a fear of people cutting and pasting art from D&D manuals that have been printed and putting it out. This is good. This is actually good because it protects the artists and the contracts they have with WOTC, and uh, that means people aren't stealing the artwork. I think that back loop is one of the things they were concerned about. You can learn a lot by of what they protect to tell you what they're, they're afraid of. In consideration with your compliance, you may cough, copy, modify, distribute our licensed content in the world. This license is perpetual, meaning no set end date, non-exclusive, meaning that we offer license to uh, under any circumstances we choose, and irrevocable. Here it is, folks, irrevocable, in print, meaning that the content licensed under this license will never be withdrawn from this license. It also cannot be modified except for the provisions of Section 5 and Section 9A regarding notices. What you own, your life's work is yours. It may not be copied without our permission. We acknowledge that we and our licensees as contact creators might independently come up with content similar. If you have a claim we have breached this provision or one of our licensees did in connection with content licensed from us, any such claim may be brought only as a lawsuit for breach of contract and only for money damages. You expressly agree that money damages are adequate re remedy and you will not seek to be entitled for injunctive relief. Okay, this is interesting too. What this means is they won't steal your work. But if if it comes if you can prove it, you can sue them, but you can't make them take it down. Uh, that means if you guys come up with the same mechanics and it's very obvious that they can, if you can prove they took it, which would be hard, took it from you, they can't, you can't make them take it down by using this OGL. That still allows some wiggle room, but it also more covers their butt for parallel design, which does happen frequently. They don't want you to say, oh, I'm sorry, you have to take that down. That that a <sighs> there was a uh deities and demigods book a long time ago, and one re release of that included Cthulhu without them having permission to do it. Uh them being uh TSR at the time. That's probably a big part of what they're worried about because they had to stop, remove it, and uh, it was a pain. So, in any such lawsuit, 
you must show knowingly because excessive uh, cop, in, uh, knowingly and intentionally copied your licensed work. Access, access, and substantial similarity will not be enough to prove this. Re yeah, it will be a pain in the butt to prove that they stole something from you. What we own, our license content, and reserve all rights not expressly granted in this license. You control your content. You must clearly indicate that your license work contains our content under this license, either by including the full term text of this license in your work or applying the creator products badge with the then current style guidelines. Okay, that's why the badge, the badge keeps you, that you from having to print this gobbledygook at the end of your book. Interesting. Interesting. So basically, if you fly the 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 uh the flag that says you, you're here with permission, you shouldn't have to put all this stuff in your book. If you don't fly the bag, the flag, you have to they want they want that badge. They want to be able to say this is stamped. They want you to, to, that is how you're going to acknowledge that you are uh, playing by their rules. Interesting. That is a fascinating caveat, folks. You may permit the use of your contract content in any terms. However, if any license offer, I guess it's working different from their terms of this you must include license work to act to to the attribution of our license content found in the preamble of the applicable SRE and make clear that our license content is license is included in your license work is made available in the terms of that license yeah they I really think they are trying to prevent uh video games I really think that there there's there's a lot of uh, back padding to prove that this is theirs. Interesting. Warranties and disclaimers. Okay. This one shouldn't be that hard. You're old enough to uh, legally do it. I'm going to skim through this. You have the, th the power and authority to use to enter the license and do it. So that's things. I would take that to be a mental clarity, things like that. I am not a lawyer. No infringement. You don't use anybody else's IP. No endorsement. Except as otherwise expressed and allowed, you will not state, suggest, or imply that your license works are endorsed or associated by us. No illegal conduct. You will not violate the law in your license work. And no hateful or content or conduct. This you will not include in your content in license work that is harmful, discriminatory, illegal, obscene, harassing, engaging in content that is harmful, uh, discriminatory, illegal, obscene, or harassing. We we have the sole right to decide what content is hateful, and you and you covenant that you will not contest any determination by any suit or legal action. This is probably the spiciest clause in here. Oh, tell me. Uh, but... I, this, this is the cancellation prevention clause. And they don't want to get burned if you goof up. This this is still kind of... I can see the necessity in, in uh, cancellation culture as it operates today. Um, but this will be the one people argue with. Modification. We, we may only modify the provisions of this license, identifying the attribute required under section 5 and the notice of provisions under section and uh, 9a we will not modify any other provision 
So identifying attribution in section five, let's go right back up to it. Be, that would be the uh, the badge or the badge or license, which makes sense if they change anything on either of those, they need wiggle room. And 9A, we're going to get, I'm interested. Uh, notices, we may notify you by email or physical address or physical address, we can locate you. Only if we cannot locate your email or physical address after such after a reasonable search, notice via public channel insufficient. You may want to provide us with the email and your physical address or any uh, notice by emailing OGL notices. Oops. By um, emailing OGL notices. And it, I just cl clicked out. So we got some technical difficulties. Give me just a second to reset that. Sorry for the technical issues, folks. Okay, well, while, while that reloads, I will set the presentation up, hopefully. Yep, there we go. All right, we were back to Section 8, going to work our way through this. Okay. So, uh, section seven, modification or termination. Here we go. Yes, that's where we were. Because we've modified, we, those are the only parts they can modify, which makes sense. Termination. We may terminate your license if you infringe on any of our intellectual property, bring an active challenge to the ownership of our trademark license, violate in any law or relationship. In relationship to your license, your activities under this license or violate Section F. So they can can you under hate speech, uh, infringement, or criminal activity related to this. We may terminate your license if you breach any other term in this license and do not cure that breach within 30 days of notice of the breach. Okay, cool. What that means is they, they can they can zap you if you breach it. But you have 30 days to fix it. And then you should be good if, if you fix it under what they asked for. That is a lot better than before. Disclaimer of warranties, limited liability. You understand and agree that we are providing licensed content as is. Make no representation or warranty of any kind concerning your use of licensed content. Expressly we d disclaim all warranties, express an implied statutory or otherwise. Do you bear the risk of using the license, that which is so solely at your use? We have no liability for any damages connected to OGL without limitation of any indirect, consequential, special, punitive, or exemplary damages, so long as content is not gross, or as long as our content is not grossly negligent or uh, intentional. Okay. That means uh, if you have problems because of this, it's not on them, unless they really do something heinous. I don't see that. Miscellaneous, always a scary term. We talked about issue 9A being the notices. The entire agreement of disclaimer of reliance. This governs your... This license consists of only the terms included and not... Any matter expressly included herein. So if it's not in the license, they can't change it. In accepting the license, you represented and warrant us 
We relied on the terms of this license and the advice of your own counsel. If any, you have not relied on anything not expressly part of this license. No waiver of rights. We, if we've uh, exercised, if we fail to exercise any right we have under this license, that failure will not prevent us from exercising that right in the future. That means if you do something that violates this license, like you publish uh, something with Drizzt in it, which you know you can't use. And they don't catch you for many years, they still can catch you. Severability. If this license is held to be unenforceable or invalid for any reason, license may wizards may declare the entire license void, either as between it and the party obtained ruling in its entirely. Unless wizards elects to do so, the balance of the license will be enforced as if that part was which was in, unenforceable or invalid didn't exist. Okay, this is fun. This means uh, if there's a ruling later that says, say, they can't uh, get rid of the OGL. If somebody challenges them legally about um, OGL 1A and they ax it, the rest of the license can keep going because it would be a ruling. That's interesting. Governing law jurisdiction refers to all matters in its interpretation and force governed by the state of Washington and any disputes arising out of relating to this license, which will solely exclude through individual litigation in the state federal courts. All parties consent to the jurisdiction of such courts, each party has irrevocably raised the right to participate in any class, collective, or joint. Whoo, that's spicy. The now you you will find this. I've seen this in a lot of video games, actually, in the uh, terms of service, because that's what this is. Don't get confused. the The OGL is essentially a term, very much like a terms of service agreement. Uh, the the parties expressly consent. This means if if a bunch of people under the license go, wow, we all got messed over, you cannot do any joint action, no collective or class action lawsuits. They are scared of that. Headings and footnotes uh, containing this license are for reference purposes and shall not affect the meaning. I don't really see much in the way of headings other than for description. Well, for discussion purposes only is interesting. Waiver of jury tri trial. We waive the right. You waive the right to jury trial on any dispute or claim action related arising out of this. That's. Again, not surprising. They don't want to be taken to court by their creators because that's expensive and problematic. They the review by counsel. This is interesting. You seek the, the advice. You should seek advice of the counsel to make sure you understand this license. You agree that you had an opportunity to do so. Um, that's... Again, this, this says, well, you had a chance to talk to a lawyer before you signed on. They are really worried about uh, why. Now, let's get to the VTT stuff because this is spicy and I have a few minutes to cover it. Wizards of the Coast Virtual Tabletop Policy version 1.0. Oh. Uh, as gamers, we are big fans of VTTs. We are... Announcing this new VTT policies rollout of uh, OGL1. Uh, we support VTT play in the, the, the table spot space. Uh, that's wonderful, 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 wonderful. This, they're talking about, you know, RVTs are more than just a replacement for tabletop. This is where we're going to get a lot of what they're there worried about answering them will take time we want policy to the, to reflect your input so we will be asking for feedback goals what is permitted under this policy using vtts to replicate the experience of sitting around 
So you can use VTTs. This, so displaying SRD content is fine. It's just like looking in the source book. You can put the text of the magic missile up on your VTT and use it to calculate and apply damage to your target. And automating magic missiles damage to automatic to replace is oh, okay. So you can use systems to do it. Uh, a VTT can apply magic missiles one automatically if you're hits. You do not manual. You do not have to manually contact the damage. Okay. What isn't permitted is that you don't replicate our features. You don't replicate on your side. So if you replace your imagination with an animation. Okay, so if you replace your ana with animation streaking across the board, your your VTT gen or your VTT generates, it's not a table. It's more like a video game. Okay, that's the this right here is the shot. This is the shot that round the world. You can use a VTT, but you you cannot animate the effects like I thought. Reading through this, this is video game prevention. They don't want you to be able to use sparkly effects and play D&D. This is the shot to bring down all the other VTTs to make them look less effective versus the others. That's what this, believe it or not, is one of the most important clauses in this whole thing. Also, may I make my VTT owlbear token look like the one from... No, we never licensed visual content, just the text. It hasn't changed. This makes sense. Uh, if you want to, you want to do an owl bear, you can do your own. And you can already use a VT, uh, OGL 1A material to the VTT. I own or operate a VTT. How does this affect me? If you are a VTT owner or operator that supports on your platform, you have the same obligations to content as a website owner or operator under the uh, DMCA. You say this is a conversation. Does this mean this policy can change? Yes, we want feedback as the uh, space evolves. The, the policy of the VTTs is we don't want to harm their development. Okay. Before I end this video, real quick and hop over to my other a planned video. This right here is where all a whole lot of the spice for this document really is. And you're the next thing people are going to talk about is this. They don't want animations. They want to be able to make their their uh the Dungeons and Dragons Beyond uh roll D20 or that they purchased uh the only pretty one. This is where your next, next, but this is, well, that's my one. All right, folks. This is where the, one of the big arguments is going to be. Thank you for sitting with my walkthrough through this. Pardon any technical doubt issues. Uh, I think this is the best that we're going likely to get. The creative content is an interesting boon. Uh, this may this is enough to for me to feel we can step back and have a conversation now. There are a couple key things that bug me. Uh, the uh, the 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 VTT thing, which doesn't affect me directly, but will affect the systems, and uh, the line between what you can and can't do. Know it if you're if you're planning to use the uh, uh, Creative Commons aspect. Look into it. This is very close. That that's a that's a huge chunk that you can use the mechanics. Here's the thing, though. I think legally you can use the mechanics. In my opinion, I am not a lawyer. You could use the mechanics anyway. You can't uh, trademark mechanics, or uh, you can't copyright them. I just get that flipped. Uh, but Look at a legal eagle did a great video on it. This is exciting because it means they're they're really tailoring in both what is their fear and their fear is TT uh, is uh, VTTs more than anything, 
And uh, the badge is interesting. They don't want confusion over what is and isn't. I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. And if you want more videos in this format, pardon any technical difficulties, I have a live stream I have to do basically immediately. So uh, thank you. Please like, share, and subscribe to this video. And you know, comment what you if you like me doing this kind of thing.